Jesus Christ, and we are a new creation. For this saving mystery and for this water, let us bless God who was, who is, and who is to come. We thank you, God, for your river of life flowing freely from your throne through the earth, through the city, through every living thing. You rescued Noah and his family from the flood. You opened wide the sea for the Israelites. Now in these waters you flood us with mercy, and our sin is drowned forever. You open the gate of righteousness, and we pass safely through. In Jesus Christ you calm and trouble the waters. You nourish us and enclose us in safety. You call us forth and send us out. In lush and barren places you are with us. You have become our salvation. Now breathe upon this water and awaken your church once more. Claim us again as your beloved and holy people. Quench our thirst, cleanse our hearts, wipe away every tear. To you, our beginning and our end, our shepherd and lamb, be honor, glory, and praise, and thanksgiving, now and forever. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices in our gathering song, Hymn 362, At the Lamb's High Feast, we sing. <laughs>
Good morning, St. Martin's. Good morning. Good morning. I invite you to be seated for the announcements. Welcome to worship today, this fourth Sunday in Easter and this Mother's Day. This is the day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Uh, forgive me, I'm coming off of a week of bronchitis. I don't have the voice I usually have, so you're going to have to listen a little harder today. We'll do our best, and God will be glorified all the same. Amen? Amen. Amen. A few announcements as we get started today. We are continuing sales for uh, Space Cowboys tickets. The game is on the 22nd, just a few weeks away now. Jason, anything you want to tell us about the game? Very good. Uh, registration is also open for Luther Hill Day Camp. Uh, that will be going on the last week of June. Uh, I know registration slots are already filling up, so if you have children, grandchildren, neighbor children, children on the street that you pass and decide <laughs> you want to pick them up, uh, we'd love to have them here. Uh, also, if you are willing to help with snacks, if you're willing to help with bodies, uh, Kelsey can tell you more about what our needs currently are. I know many of you have already stepped up, and we give thanks to God for that gift. As I mentioned, today is Mother's Day, and it is a day where so many of us celebrate the gift of mothers, the gift of our mothers, the gift of being a mother. It is also a day where many mourn the loss of motherhood, the challenges of infertility, the desire to become mother or broken families. And so we hold all of these things together as we observe this Mother's Day in our worship today. We give thanks for mothers of all kinds, for mothers, stepmothers, foster mothers, adoptive mothers, birth mothers, grandmothers, godmothers. <laughs> the list could go on for a while and I don't have a voice, so I'm going to stop it there. We have carnations this morning that are set up on these front tables. We invite you when you come forward to receive communion to take a carnation from those tables. If you are a mother, if you are uh, celebrating motherhood, if you are mourning today and need a symbol to hold on to, we invite you to take those with you today. And know that for all the ways that you are involved in mothering in your personal lives and in this community, we give thanks to God for the gift of the mothers among us. Now I invite you to rise as your able beloved. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. <clears throat> Thank you. 
God of peace, you brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of your eternal covenant, make us to please in everything good, that we may do your will, and work among us all that is well pleasing in your sight, through Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated. I invite our children forward for the children's message. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning, all God's children. We got a few more coming. Hello. Hello. <coughs> I have a question for you. <coughs> Who takes care of you at home? My mom. Your moms and dads? Maybe grandma sometimes? Me? God? Skip into the good answer. Yeah, your parents take care of you, right? Yeah, yeah. We're getting there. That's, that's the... You're skipping to the end. <laughs> your parents take care of you. Your parents take care of you, and sometimes maybe grandparents or others come alongside. Let me ask you, what's something your mom does to take care of you? Um, help you when you're sick. Help you when you're sick. Cook food for you so you don't starve. Like, get us clothes. Get clothes. Anyone else? What's mom do? You can help out too. What's mom do? Love us. Love us. Help you get to bed, yeah. Wash clothes. <laughs> Wash clothes, that's a big one. Take care of us, yeah. Wash clothes, that's important. You know, we have in our reading today, there's a psalm, Psalm 23. And Psalm 23 doesn't talk about a parent like a mother. It talks about a shepherd taking care of the sheep. And it turns out a lot of the things that your moms and dads do to take care of you are the things that a shepherd does for their sheep. The song says, the Lord is my shepherd, I will not want. He leads me beside still waters. He gives me good food to eat. He makes me lie down in safety. He feeds me, he comforts me, he cares for me, he protects me. Those are all of the things that the shepherd does for the sheep. And Jesus tells us in our gospel today that he is the good shepherd. That we are all like Jesus' sheep. Those are the things that Jesus does for us. And so we get a glimpse of who God is and the way that God loves us by looking at our parents, by looking at our mothers, our fathers, our grandparents. It's an opportunity to see God's love through the people who care for us. And I heard a couple of you say it. Ultimately, the people who take care of us are God. God takes care of us by providing all of the things we need, including good mothers. So let's pray together. Dear God, Dear God thank you for taking care of us and giving us all we need. We thank you for mothers of all kinds in the way they show us your love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you so much for coming up. You can go back to your seats. We'll continue with our first reading. A reading from the seventh chapter of the book of Revelation, beginning with the ninth verse. After this, I looked, and there was a great multitude that no one could count from every nation, from all tribes and peoples and languages, standing before the throne and before the Lamb, robed in white with palm branches in their hands. They cried out in a loud voice, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who is seated on the throne, and to the Lamb. And all the angels stood around the throne and around the elders and the four living creatures. And they fell on their faces before the throne and worshiped God, singing, 
Amen. Blessed, blessings and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power and might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. Then one of the elders addressed me, saying, Who are these robed in white, and where have they come from? I said to him, Sir, you are the one who knows. Then he said to me, These are they who have come, down, come out of the great ordeal. They have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. For this reason they are before the throne of God and worship him all day and night within his temple. And the one who is seated on the throne will shelter them. They will hunger no more and thirst no more. The sun will not strike them, nor any scorching heat. For the lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd, and he will guide them to springs of water of life, and he will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Here ends the reading. Our psalm, psalm today is Psalm 23. The congregation will read the bolded verses. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not be lost. The Lord makes me lie down in green pastures and leads me beside still waters. You restore my soul, O Lord, and guide me along my pathways to your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil, and my cup is running over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And you rise as you're able. according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. At that time, the festival of dedication took place in Jerusalem. It was winter, and Jesus was walking in the temple in the portico of Solomon. So the Jews gathered around him and said to him, How long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. Jesus answered, I have told you, and you do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me, but you do not believe because you do not belong to my sheep. My sheep hear my voice. I know them and they follow me. I give them eternal life and they will never perish. No one will snatch them out of my hand. What my Father has given me is greater than all else, and no one can snatch it out of the Father's hand. The Father and I are one. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. Grace and peace be to you from God our Creator and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, when Julie and I first started dating, we talked a lot about our kids. She'd tell me stories about the boys, I'd tell her all about Ryan. 
We'd send pictures back and forth to each other. For me, hearing stories about Nicholas and Aiden and seeing Julie's face light up when she talked about them was an important part of getting to know her. In fact, it was the way she talked about them on our first date, the way she so obviously loved being a mom that made me very confident that I wanted a second date. In those early days, we were also very deliberate about not meeting each other's children. We wanted to make sure there was a solid relationship that we wanted to pursue with each other before we brought the kids into it. But eventually, it was time for me to meet Nicholas and Amy, for Julie to meet Ryan. Sometime later, after we had been dating for a good while, Julie and I were standing in the kitchen, and Ryan suddenly asked, Can I call you Mom? I will confess that all at once I felt a well of joy and a panic. Joy because my daughter had clearly accepted the relationship with Julie to the point of which she wanted to figure out what to call her. Panic because up to that moment we had not had any kind of conversation about how to answer that question. And we wanted to find a way to honor both her relationship with Julie and her relationship with her mother in Georgia. Julie tells me I froze. But I think we kicked the can down the road a bit and said something about how we'd talk about what she should call Julie. It didn't take her too long to ask again. And by the time we got engaged, Ryan had already settled comfortably into calling Julie mom. Truth is, folks, that Julie has been mom since about the day she met Ryan. They have always had a very natural connection, and Julie has treated Ryan like her own daughter all along. I'm deeply grateful for that because I know that it often does not go so smoothly. But Ryan could feel Julie's genuine affection and care from the day they met. Before the question ever came up about what to call her, Ryan knew how Julie made her feel before it was made legal through our marriage. Julie's place as mom was real through her actions. Now this fourth Sunday in Easter every year is sometimes referred to as Good Shepherd Sunday because our gospel lesson each year on this day comes from part of John 10. Today we find Jesus walking in the temple and the people come to him and ask, how long will you keep us in suspense? If you are the Messiah, tell us plainly. They want to know once and for all who this Jesus is. And Jesus replies, I have told you. You do not believe. The works that I do in my Father's name testify to me. Jesus knows that words alone don't make something true. It is the action that supports the words. The works he has performed say exactly who Jesus is. He is the good shepherd of the sheep. I'm always grateful when Good Shepherd Sunday falls on Mother's Day. Because the truth is, I don't know anything about sheep or shepherds. Parenting I get. I'm often struck by the parallels between David's beautiful words in the 23rd Psalm and the work and the wonder of parenting. I don't know much about green pastures and still waters, but I see Julie making breakfast for Ryan every morning before Ryan even wakes up. I've never tried to guide a flock of sheep along a path, but I've walked with my daughter to the park. I don't have a rod or a staff. But I know what it is to correct bad choices and to put band-aids on boo-boos. I know how hard it is to watch her leave for the summer and the joy of hearing her voice when we pick her back up and she says, Daddy, Mama. These are the kind of works I think of when Jesus talks about being the good shepherd, feeding the hungry crowds, leading his disciples, healing the sick, forgiving the outcast, teaching the set in their ways. 
These are the works that testify to him. And they are just a glimpse of the unfathomable, unfailing love of the Father. Jesus tells us that his sheep know his voice and follow him. He says that those given into his care cannot be taken away from him. Under the watchful eye of the good shepherd, we have provision and protection. We find wholeness and home. Of course, while Jesus says that no one can snatch away those who have been put into his hands, that doesn't mean that we don't sometimes wander off. The prophet Isaiah reminds us that all we, like sheep, have gone astray. There is a viral video I've seen a number of times of a person, presumably a shepherd, pulling a sheep out of a ditch by its hind legs, struggling as the sheep is resisting. <laughs> and finally, the man pulls the sheep free, and the sheep in great joy takes about two leaps and dives headfirst back into the ditch. <laughs> what a great metaphor for our lives, isn't it? We wander, we adventure, we test, we grow, we explore. Sometimes, if we're honest, we don't very much like where it gets us. Sometimes we get hurt along the way. Sometimes we can't seem to find our way back home. Sometimes we get pulled out of the mess we've been in just to jump head first right back into it. But beloved, we never wander so far that we are outside the loving, watchful gaze of our God. Not because God is watching and waiting to judge our wrongdoing because there may be boundaries to enforce and boo-boos to soothe and wonders to enjoy. The psalmist says it like this, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. The word we translate as follow, radaf, has military connotations. It means to pursue, to chase, to hunt. The goodness and mercy of God are like a bloodhound. That once they have your scent, they will not stop until they find you. The goodness and mercy of God are like a parent who will not rest until their child is safe and home and cared for. The goodness and mercy of God are with us in every joy and every pain, in sunlight, in shadow, providing for needs we never knew we had, and comforting us when we cannot see beyond our frustration, our grief, or our fear. And we can have confidence in that promise, beloved, because our good shepherd is himself the Lamb of God. Who better to know the needs of the sheep than the one who is the Lamb? Who better to guide us in our steps than one who has walked the road himself? In this Easter season, the tomb stands empty as a sign for us that there is no road we can take that Christ has not walked first himself. And no matter how lost we might be, Jesus knows the way home. And should we doubt that promise? We come to this place to be reminded again and again. The still waters that wash us clean. To a table prepared for us presence of a sometimes hostile and broken world, to a word that names us and claims us and calls us to follow. Here in this place, goodness and mercy are made tangible. We can see their presence in our lives and the mark they have left upon us. They strengthen us for the journey ahead and promise us that no matter where this long and winding road may take us, it is never out of the sight of our shepherd, never beyond the loving gaze of God. And in the fullness of time, church, we will return to a place prepared for us, brought home to arms spread wide in welcome. For my money, no one says it better than Isaac Watts in the final verse of our sending hymn today. Here what I find a settled rest, while others go and come. No more a stranger or a guest, but like a child at 
and whole. When we come at last into the resurrection life promised to us, it will not be as visitors or tourists or outsiders, but like little children coming home, running without fear or reservation into the arms of one who has followed us every step of our journey, laughing as we enter fully into a love that has no bounds. Beloved, I don't know much about sheep or shepherds, but I know the love of a parent for their child. On this Mother's Day, just as Ryan asked Julie, I wonder if we could ask God, can I call you mom? The Lord is my mother, tending to my every need. She tucks me into bed and sings me to sleep. She prepares healthy meals for me to eat. She nurtures me with her love. She teaches me the right thing to do, so I grow up to be a person who makes her proud. Even when depression or fear cast a dark cloud over me, I know that I'm safe because you never give up on me. You wrap your arms around me, giving me comfort and peace. You remind me how proud you are of me, especially when I have trouble being proud of myself. You dream big dreams for my future. I am blessed beyond measure. I know your tenderness and compassion will guide me every day of my life. And no matter where I have gone or what I have done, you will always be waiting to welcome me home. Dear church, may we know such a love, and may we share it with the world. Amen. We invite you to rise as you're able. Let us join our hearts and voices in our hymn of the day, it was 735, Mothering God Gave Me Birth. <laughs> the whole church on earth, let us confess our faith using the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father of the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, the eternal begotten
he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. And his kingdom will have no end. We do believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken to the cross. We believe in one holy Catholic apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. I invite you to be seated. Set free from captivity to sin and death, we pray to the God of resurrection for the church, people in need, and all of creation. Gentle shepherd, enable your church to respond to the voice of Jesus. Give us unfailing trust, unafraid to join in Jesus' work of renewing all things. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Feed your people at the table of creation. Prepare a safe place for those whose environments are dangerous or unhealthy, especially those making difficult journeys. Prosper your crea creation for the sake of every living thing. God, in your mercy, yeah. warm the hearts of all who celebrate and all who mourn on Mother's Day. <coughs> Accompany those yearning to be mothers. Help us to heal from broken family relationships and open us to receive your nurturing love from all who serve mothering roles in our lives. God, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Seek out those who weep while they wait healing or consolation, especially Anne Marie, Jeff, Barbara, Jean, Mitzi, John, Don, Terry, Don, Don, Deborah, Sharon, Steve, Amy, Mike, Pat, Vito, Adriana, Joyce, David, Bob, Suzanne, Arlene, Tony, Ruth, Linda, and all those we name before you now, aloud and in the silence of our hearts. Set people in their path who can provide the care they need and wipe away every tear from their eyes. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Inspire the words of prophets and saints who employ innovative imagery to stretch our understanding. Send Christ to instruct us with motherly care. God, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Enfold us in the great multitude of saints from every nation, from all tribes and people and languages. Wash us in your saving grace every day. Guide us to your waters of life. God, in your mercy. Amen. In your mercy, O oh God, we stop, respond to these prayers and renew us by your life-giving spirit through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you all. And also with you. Let us share that peace with one another.
At this time, we invite those of you who are worshiping along at home to have bread and wine or crackers and juice available with you so that you may too participate in the Eucharist as we celebrate together. And for those here who are more comfortable, we do have uh, still some of the prepackaged communion kits. If you would like one of those, please uh, check with our usher. Uh, we can get those to you. I invite you to rise as you're able. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, for the glorious resurrection of our Savior, Jesus Christ, the true Paschal Lamb, who gave himself to take away our sin, who in dying has destroyed death and in rising has brought us to eternal life. And so with Mary Magdalene and Peter and all the witnesses of the resurrection, with earth and sea and all their creatures, with angels and archangels, cherubim and seraphim, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. <laughs> Betrayed our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks, blessed it, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, he gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, poured out for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins. Forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For thy is the power and the glory of yours, now and forever. Amen. All are welcome at the Lord's table. Taste and see that the Lord is good.
Now may this body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in God's grace unto life everlasting. Amen. Amen. May you rise as you're able for benediction. Now, beloved, may the Christ who walks on wounded feet walk with you on the road. May the Christ who serves with wounded hands stretch out your hands to serve. May the Christ who loves with a wounded heart open your hearts to love. May you see the face of Christ in everyone you meet. And may everyone you meet see the face of Christ in you. Amen. Amen. Let us join our hearts and voices in our ascending song, hymn 782, My Shepherd, You Supply My Need.
is risen. Go in peace, beloved. Tell what God has done.